I've been waiting a very long time to get my hands on one of these. So here it is, the Porsche Taycan. This is just gonna be a super quick, well it probably won't be that quick, video, first impressions of the car. First time with one today, so you'll get my reaction of what it's really like, but I mean, look at it, it just looks incredible. All the pictures that I've seen of this car, it sort of looks all right, but in person, it looks so good, so low, so fat. I'll show you from all the different angles here. Look at that. What an angle that is. So, I'll show you a bit of the interior. You've got that great big screen right in front of you there. Huge, great big panoramic roof. Which from the outside, you can't even really tell. That's not unlocked. Rear of the car then. I believe this trim is the um, the vegan the vegan interior Bose sound system as with most Porsche products rear screen there as well for the rear seat passengers to control their uh, heated seat and climate control and there's a little view up front as well so let's get in obviously like I say this is a first impressions video, so don't ever go at me about not being so precise and specific about lots of different things. So here we go then. So we've got three screens, one down here, a smaller one there that will display climate control functions um, and a few different menu things at the top. Battery button there. So you can see, before setting off, now this would be quite interesting actually. Before setting off, we've got 207 miles of range, 84%. And the car has done six, uh, sorry, 3,606 miles. So let's have a look when we get back from our drive and uh, see how that range depletes. Steering wheel, very familiar if you've ever driven a 911 or many other Porsche products. Drive mode here. So you can change that between oops, between range, normal, sports, sport plus, or individual. If you want to tailor any one of those options to your um, liking. I've gone for sports plus because, you know, why not? Normal home screen there where you have your navigation, media, phone. What looks a little unusual is that looks like a screen as well, but it isn't. Um, I think possibly they could have done something all the way along there because a lot of manufacturers are doing that sort of thing now with their electric cars. What I do like is the fact that this screen is curved. Now that's very unusual. It's a 16 point eight inch screen and um, also it's a touch screen because you can press these buttons here that raises or lowers the car it's raising up now suspension settings tra traction control settings headlights on this side in the middle then what have we got okay so different menus here it's like every other Porsche really you can you can tailor what what you want on the um, dials there's a lot to take in okay right let's um let's stop looking around the cabin 
Uh, I will attach the GoPro to the windscreen and let's go for a little drive, shall we? This is, I should say, the turbo model. There's three models. There's the 4S, the Taycan uh, 4S, Taycan Turbo, Taycan Turbo S. Obviously, they don't have turbos. That's just the way to differentiate the, the levels of performance in the car. Got a little spec sheet here because there's so many numbers. Um, I'll keep it brief. So the 4S, that starts at 83,500 pounds around 530 horsepower, not to 62 in four seconds. That's a quick car, to be honest with you, that's four seconds, not to 60, it is, it's a quick, it's quick. Um, the turbo then, this this car, that starts at 115 and a half thousand pounds, or a little over. It has 680 horsepower, there, thereabouts, 680 PS. 850 newton meters of torque now that is like an insane amount of torque 0 to 62 will be dealt with in 3.2 seconds 161 miles an hour top speed not that you ever need to do that um, the turbo s which is one level above this is starts at 138,830 pounds and it will do 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. It has over a thousand newton meters of torque, 760 horsepower, and do the same top speed 162. They've all got about the same range, about the same top speed. I mean, not a huge amount of difference in 0 to 60, to be honest with you, um, especially between the Turbo and Turbo S. Um, Let's get on the road. I'll stop rambling about that. Let's just get on the road, buckle up, and we'll go for a little drive. Right, so, first impressions then. Also, excuse the rambling, I, I never know, have any clue what I'm gonna say while I'm going on these little videos. So if I'm talking and you're thinking, oh, what are you going on about, mate? That's just, the, that's just what this video is, sorry. Um, I'm just going to take a little drive around town and then I'm going to go on a, a faster road on a dual carriageway and we can open it up a little bit, see what's what. Can you hear that? I really hope you can hear that noise because it's it sounds like there's no other way to describe it apart from it sounds like Tron. Such a cool noise! Like, why don't all electric cars make it make a noise? I think a lot of them are going to start making a noise, um, especially at slow speeds, for safety more than anything. Whoa, it's quick. This is seriously fast, this car. Just starting to rain, and it's, it's strange because apart from that noise, which you can turn off, by the way, you can turn off that atmospheric noise, going go down here you can turn off that noise so apart from that all I can hear is the rain hitting the windscreen it's so quiet it's so refined build quality I mean it's it's a Porsche it's they build cars better than anyone else in terms of quality fit and finish ergonomics just everything the tactile stuff that the materials that you touch are exactly what you would expect from a Porsche or a Porsche if you're being a Porsche enthusiast and saying it properly the Alcantara steering wheel although well, I don't know if it is Alcantara because I think this is a vegan interior but the, the leatherish material and the suede-ish material feel great um, the the screens work brilliantly. You almost don't actually have to touch it. it to you can just hover your finger there. You can barely touch it, and it and it goes to the next screen. It's so quick, so um, so quick. Yeah, it's so quick. It just work. It just works so well. It's so cool. I love this car. So just pottering around town then, and it feels a very 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 comfortable car even in sports plus do you know what i'm going to put it in normal just so we can feel what 
it's like in comfort mode and it's I mean listen it's so refined it feels like a Porsche it, feel, it actually feels like a Porsche to drive which unless you have had spent a lot of time with one you probably don't know what I mean but if you have, then you'll know exactly what I mean. It's got that directness to the steering. It feels planted. It, it just, the cabin is cocooned around you. It feels like a proper Porsche. But with extra poke, that torque is instant. As soon as you go, you know, I've tickled the throttle this whole drive and it just goes, boom, you're off. Um, in fact, I'm just as I set, stop at the set of lights, I can tell you a stat here which impressed me, right? 49 miles an hour to 74 miles an hour, overtaking the speed on a motorway, as, essentially. 1.9 seconds. <laughs> you can overtake anything like that. That's, that's just nuts. Whereas the internal combustion engine, obviously, You've got to kick down the gears, the turbos have got to spool up, the torque's got to get, um, ride the wave of torque, and then you're at peak power and then you shoot off. Now there's a lot of performance cars that do that very, very well, but with an electric car, the, it's instant. There's no waiting for a gearbox, there's no waiting for turbos, there's no waiting for anything. It's just foot down, bosh, away you go. I love it. Like obviously, I'm working there. I'm a petrol head. I love noises. I love the sound of an engine. You know, a V8, a flat six, a V12. But this has got such a unique sound to it. I really like this as well. Okay, here's a little, I mean, a little dash, just a tiny little dash because there's a speed camera. 30 to 40, ready? 3, 2, 1. Whoa, Jesus! Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! By the way, that was more than, that was more than the speed I meant to go to. Uh, that is nuts! That is nuts! And it's wet! How did it... That's blown my mind. That is insane acceleration. I've never felt anything like that. I've not been as wowed by the acceleration of a car since I first drove the Lamborghini Urus. Um, and that was on a track. And that was like, oh wow, that's quick for the size of the car. This is just mental. I mean, that borders on, I don't want to say it's dangerous, because it's got four-wheel drive and incredibly complicated, sophisticated electronic um, nannies to look after you to make sure you don't crash. But that, if you're not used to fast cars, you're gonna need some new trousers after you've been in this, because I'm used to fast cars, and that, that was outrageous. Uh, I mean, I might have to do it again. Okay, so... 50 mile limit, 30 to 50. Whoa! 50! <laughs> oh, that's... That's... That's mental! That is mental! Like I felt the blood go from the front of my head to the back of my head. It's like falling off a cliff. It's like being on a roller coaster. That's absolutely insane. So, let's settle down then. And let's have a little cruise. We're gonna go, let's go to, I know there's a, a charger in Tesco's car park, right? So, it's only a three kilowatt charger. 
I'll explain a little bit about that there so don't expect us to gain any real range of mileage by the time that we're there but I'll see you there in a sec. Okay right we've arrived at Tesco and there is a charger it's actually a seven kilowatt charger which is uh, the same as what you would have if you had a home charger on your house it would be seven kilowatts. Um, Right, so as we can see down here, I now have 199 miles of range. I've done, how many miles is that? I did about six miles, I think. And it's dropped by that much. I can't remember what it is. I'll put it on the screen because I can't remember. But that's how much it's used. And let's be honest majority of that trip i was nailing it so while i look for where the charging cable is you might as well come with me and uh, have a look at the uh, boot space the bonnet space there it is there's the charger in there i'll get that out in just a sec i'll just show you the um the boot space as well because that is important to people who buy this sort of big car there you go um i was expecting it to lift up from glass and be like a hatchback but nope more charging gubbins down there so let me find out which cable i actually need to plug into this and we'll do that right here we go then got this cable out the boot cables there plug that in and then it should be as simple as plugging that in i don't know what that button does but it's now glowing so that probably means it's charging let's go and have a look in the car Let's see what's going on. Okay, right, so. We have a new screen. So, um, what is this telling us then? Oh, look at that little graphic. Like liquid going into the battery. It's now gone on to 210 miles instantly. And we are charging at, now this is the problem with, Ah, oh, there's a matter with you, GoPro. Um, this is the problem with the free chargers that you get at Tesco's and things like that. It says up there, well, you can't see, it's focusing on the road trucks. It says up there, seven kilowatt hours. That is monumentally slow, which means it will give you 0.2 miles of range per minute now i mean that is pointless i think they've just put these here as a token to say look we're eco-friendly or something like that or maybe you have to hit targets of some rubbish i don't know but seven kilowatts is not fast enough it has to be 50 now let me talk to you about um different charging things i'll switch to the other camera hang on so this can charge up to 270 kilowatts, right? That means if you can find, and it's a big if in the UK at the moment, if you can find a 270 kilowatt charger, bearing in mind this one I'm using is a seven kilowatt charger, it will take five minutes to add 60 miles of range to this car. Now that's good because how often do you drive more than 60 miles in a day? really unless you're doing a long commute if you're just zipping about town that's probably all you need to do and it takes five minutes if you have one of those chargers or you're much more likely to find a 50 kilowatt charger in the uk there's loads of them dotted around all over the place that will take 28 minutes to charge 60 miles so for example if you came to do your shopping and these were 50 kilowatt chargers instead of seven by the time you've come out and finish your shop, you've added about 60 miles or 62 miles um, of range. Now, I think that's that's pretty good. That's pretty usable. If you are running extremely low on charge and say you only have 5% battery left, if you go to a 50 kilowatt charger, then um, it will take 93 minutes to charge you up to 80% of battery. Um, this all the the figures that you see on electric cars and how fast it takes to charge go up to 80 percent that is because the speed that it can fill the battery um 
is very, very fast indeed until about 80%, and then it has to slow down to protect um, the battery. Um, so yeah, that's that. Also, what's quite good is you, like a lot of people, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people really hate the idea of electric and they will come up with any excuse of why they would never do it. Well, I'm not getting electric, that's rubbish. Oh, the fuel comes from somewhere still. Ugh. Those sort of people, they anger me. But a lot of them go, oh, well, how long is the battery going to last? I bet it only lasts a couple of years, then you have to change it. Ugh. There's an eight year warranty on this car. On, on the batteries, sorry, the eight, eight year warranty on the batteries. When was the last time you heard of an eight year warranty on an internal combustion engine? It doesn't happen because they break, they go wrong, they have all sorts of faults. So that should shut people up. Let's have a look now. I've been here for five minutes. I've gained 1% of battery, one mile of range. Um, these charges are rubbish but having said that so if you I know I'm really rambling on and this you've probably turned off well in advance of getting to this point if you had a seven kilowatt charger at home um, and you can plug in every night that's perfectly feasible because it would take you around 10 hours ish um, to charge it on a seven kilowatt charger up to about 80% I believe. Um, obviously you're not going to be dropping down to no percent so it, it, that, that's sort of irrelevant and also the car claims to do somewhere between 250 and 300 miles on range depending on your driving style and all the rest of it. Um, there's a man staring at me this is the thing when when you drive an electric car, people come and stare at you because they go, oh, what's that? I don't know what that is, but I'll just, I won't ask him about it. I'll just go and stare at it, but not ask. Anyway, I got sidetracked there. What the hell was I talking about? So ask yourself this, right? So how many miles do you do a day? Genuinely, I know I do about four, <laughs> like, realistically if I'm going somewhere after work if I'm going to the gym or if I'm going food shopping or whatever I might do 10 miles in a day 15 at a push um, this has got over 200 mile range even if you're nailing it I'm sure the range is going to be over 200 miles because if it's saying 250 ish 300 possibly if you drive like a nun um, then it's going to do 4 miles a day, 10 miles a day, 20 miles a day. So if you use your car as infrequently as that, then, and I appreciate a lot of people don't, then an electric car makes perfect sense. If you're doing 100 miles a day, it makes perfect sense. If you're doing 200 miles a day, occasionally we all have to make journeys that are longer than that. But that's fine because you stop off at service station quick juice up 30 minutes say go in have a cup of tea cup of coffee use the bathroom um whatever else you you're probably going to be in there half an hour not in the not in the bathroom for half an hour but the whole experience of stopping at the motorway services i would say probably takes half an hour on, on average 20 minutes half an hour that will get you a good amount of range to go on and then stop again like it's it's just a different way of doing things and as things get faster or not as the cars necessarily improve because the cars are already good as the charging infrastructure improves those wait times will get shorter and shorter and shorter um, and that's when really the electric car thing is going to take off massively okay one thing that I will mention actually as we move off you might be able to see it from there the um, reversing camera is quite low quality. Like it's fine, it's perfectly, it's perfectly good, perfectly usable. But you would just think that 
since this car is the most high-tech car that Porsche make, they would have put a better camera in. But that's fine, just a little, little thing. Everything else I absolutely love about this car. So the brakes, whilst I'm driving slowly, I'll tell you, the brakes, when you first get on the brakes, it doesn't actually use the discs at all. It just uses the, um, the regen. And then once it's past a th certain threshold of, of um, force, then it applies the actual brake. But you don't notice it. You wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know that if I didn't tell you. A lot of people as well is moaning about why electric cars are no good. Also say things like, oh, electric cars won't take off for years. Um, it's gonna be 10 years until we see electric cars making any sense and people buying them. Well, Mr. Angry, I've got some news for you because if you look at the sales figures last month, August 2020, for Porsche, Porsche, um, this car is the highest selling model in the whole Porsche range. Now, that is staggering. I think it was something like the top seven was the Panamera, which is kind of looks like this, but petrol, petrol car. Um, the Cayman, Cayman, which is a hard top boxster. The Cayenne Coupe, the Macan, the Cayenne SUV, the 911, and then this. This outsold the 911. That's that really is quite a, a monumental um, feat. Really, it just shows the interest in this car. So as we um, as we head back now, I will do. I'll just give you a very 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 brief summary of this car. I love it. I absolutely love it. If I could afford one of these cars, I would buy it today. This is the best car on the market right now. And I don't say things like that lightly because, like I said earlier, we deal with the best cars in the world. This is the best one. In my opinion, which I know a lot of people will go, oh, I don't care about your opinion. But in my opinion, someone who drives these cars every day, this is the best one. It's the most interesting. The technology is brilliant. The layout in the cabin is brilliant. This performance is mind blowing. If you can find a good charger, the charging system is brilliant. It looks fantastic. I think it looks so cool. Those four LED headlights at the front look incredible. I love it. If you can afford one, you should buy one. There's nothing more I can say. I'm sorry that this video probably went on for absolutely ages but if you have enjoyed it please leave a thumbs up please comment would you have this or would you have a tesla would you have a model s over this would you save 50 ish thousand and get a model 3 or have this let me know in the comments please subscribe please like it and um yeah Hopefully it won't be too long until I see you in another video. Goodbye.